Bruin. Do me a favor, Steve. Is that a 6v6 right there? Is that a 6v6? What do you think? Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to do something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I'm kind of hoping it's going to end up being a lot of fun. But um, in the lair and off camera is Berwin. I don't know if you can hear him purring. He's just sitting here on top of the bench keeping me company right now. And uh, what I want to do is something that I've known about for a couple of years and, and, and being uh, uh, involved with two different antique radio clubs. It's, it's kind of nice that, uh, you know, I'm not fortunate and I believe, you know, I know how lucky I am. Um, to be around a bunch of talented people and we can share thoughts and ideas and things like that. So what I want to do today is is uh, something that uh, I talked to a fellow Zenith uh, fan uh, a couple years ago. And he tipped me off with something really, really cool. Um, if you have a miniature tube, transoceanic, you may want to stick around because this, be really, this could get really interesting. Okay, here I'm uh, basically taking a picture of my uh, my laptop computer and showing a, a tube layout for, a, in this case, an H500 Transoceanic, an early version of an H500 anyway because it's using a 1S5 tube right here. The later versions, or most of the versions anyway, use the 1U5 tube. But what we're going to be focusing in on are, are, are basically these three tubes here. We have a 1U4 here. This is your RF uh, receiving reception tube here. Then you got the 1L6 Pentagrid Gavur, and everybody knows about those. And then, secondly, this is your, your IF 1U4. Now, the two 1U4s, they went into all the, basically, uh, all, all the, the miniature tubes, you know, the, the Transoceanics, the G500, H500, and all the 600 series radios. Um, I don't want to box everybody in and say that uh, this is the way to go because you could have a silver tone, you could have a, uh, a Stromberg Carlson AWP8, you could have a, a RCA Strato World. Uh, there were a lot of radios that used these. Uh, Halicrafters TW1000 and 2000 radios. They used a similar uh, tube layout uh, with some of the later radios uh, had a, uh, over here to where the speaker is that you wouldn't be able to see if I unless I just blow this up a little bit but it's not on here anyway let me see if I can make this happen here Whoop, wrong way but right here on this part of the chassis there would be a 50A1 this was a 600 series radio so anyway getting back to the story what we're going to do is we're going to make a little modification here and change out these 1U4s let me explain. Okay, we're still on my computer, and I brought up the specifications of the 1U4. And if we go down here, it's showing you all the specifications. It shows you that it uh, um, has a pin out here. Let me blow this up so you can see it a little bit better. Whoop. Okay, there's a pin out of a 1U4. Okay, and then it shows what the different pins are here. You know, your filaments, your uh, your three grids, uh, and so on. Okay, but what the thing I'm going to be focusing in on here is the specifications, or in this case, characteristics. Over here, now I remember we did a video a little while back and I explained that every tube has a certain amount of transconductance. But then if you have too, too much or an excessive amount of transconductance, it could be uh, not so good either. Well, the transconductance on 1U4 is approximately 900. There you see here the little symbol with the U. That's micro Mohs. And that's just a measurement of the, the transconductance of the tube. And then we have the number here, 900. So this is about the average characteristic uh, transconductance in a 1U4. But we're going to not use a 1U4, we're going to use a different tube. Here I have another RCA. This is a 1L4 RF amplifier pentode. Okay, It literally uses the same pinout, and you can go back 
a minute or so to the previous one, part of the video and you look it has the same pinout as the one U4 okay and the specifications are pretty similar except for one thing let's go to the amplifier section and then over here this is a little bit different here they're showing a, a minimum and a maximum transconductance here is this maximum and minimum ratings are design center values okay so for transconductance on the low end we have 925 micromoles okay we're still micromoles and a maximum of 1025 micromoles now the one U4 as you saw before was 900 so what does this mean well in talking with my friend he tells me that this actually has a little bit better sensitivity I don't know about selectivity but the sensitivity is a little bit better and has a, a, a better chance of pulling in bigger stations you know or harder to find stations on the dial so what we're going to do is I'm going to take my H500 Transoceanic we're actually going to put them in the put we're, we're going to actually test it out with the one u force and the one L4 okay and I'll have to figure out, see what we're going to do about measuring. I want something that's pretty simple because it's going to be hard to hear the difference, uh, especially through the computer. So maybe I'm going to put some kind of meter on it and uh, we'll see what the difference actually is. Okay, I got the back of my H500 open up right now. And uh, this is probably not the, going to be the best or most accurate way I'm doing this because uh, what I wanted to do is set up my scope. But then my, my partner uh, decided to uh, lay down and, and take a nap and I don't want to wake him up just to put up the scope and everything and then he's going to get all all upset and everything. So what we're going to do is is that I've, I put a, a extender, a tube extender, into the one U5 and if you see that red clip lead that's uh, weaseled in there, that's actually going to pin 4 of the one U5 and that's where the signal is actually being fed into the tube. Uh, once it gets by the second IF, so and then I just I'm just basically using a, a volt ohm meter here, and uh, just you know reading the voltage there. So here I'll leave the camera here temporarily, and I'll bring the volume up on the radio. But only we can go back to that Donald Trump. I will say that by using. Uh, Using the, the, the digital meter, there is some deterioration of the signal. I don't believe the oscilloscope would have done that, but as I tune the radio, you see how that just drops out? So some signals are going to be stronger than others. That's a local signal probably about seven miles away. for the Patriots. This now the third start of the season for Logan. That's another local uh, towards, local signal the right, right there. And first pitch curve ball in for so, a strike going one. Maybe I'll just leave this right here. All right, I'll just turn the volume down a little bit. And uh, well, we're getting showing a half a volt DC right now. So uh, let me uh, pull out the one U fours and put in uh, and put in the one L fours and see what kind of difference we're going to get. Oh, no. Okay, we ran into a little problem. <laughs> and, uh, problem is kind of I, I just I have to blame myself because uh, there's no one else to blame. Uh, Berman obviously isn't going to accept the blame. What happened was I put the 1L4s in the set and tried it and believe it or not that the voltage reading I was getting was less than half of what you saw in the display. I was getting a reading of around 0 0.18, 1 0.19 volts. And ultimately what it was was now theoretically, you know, it, all in theory it should have worked. However, uh, yours truly have been sitting on these tubes for about 25 years. I thought I had tested them 
and I thought wrong. These were well used tubes, low in emission. Uh, I ended up proving it to myself by first I put it in my my trusty and I, I love my my uh, my Sencor Mighty Might 7 tube tester to death and they were showing less uh, emissions than than the one you sick one you uh, forged that I pulled out. So I said, well, you know, I do have a TV10 tester. Let me try that. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, a TV10 tester was basically it was a military tester that was uh, uh, my mine particularly was uh, used by a, a Navy man back in World War II, and I was fortunate enough to purchase it from him before he passed away. And I've had the tester for a lot of years, but the tester will show you emissions in micromos. Well. You know, if going back to the video, you saw that it would read between uh, a good one, you know, minimum of 950 micromoles. Well, both of these tubes were, were both under 800 micromoles, uh, thus they were probably poles or whatever. And I saved them and I just, you know, I, I didn't put them with my, my tested stuff. I have uh, some tube caddies where I have tubes off to the side that have... Uh, basically either crazy expensive tubes or uh, uh, tubes that are kind of obscure and weird and I just kind of hold on to them but I never really tested them all. I mean most are most of them have been tested but these obviously I did not. So okay I guess uh, to put this uh, in, a, in an epilogue kind of mode so we could just kind of move on is that I did find out that one to two one u fours in both my H500 and my A600 leather transoceanic, which are the two, two uh, miniature tube transoceanics that I have, one of the two 1U4s in both of them were on the weak side. So what I did was I placed both of them with new old stock ones. And it did kind of get the RF a little bit better. It was a little more uh, uh, sensitive. So um, theoretically, the 1L4 should have worked. But uh, the, the ones that I had with me were not that great. Now, I, now just as a final thing, I did uh, sell a couple of these that I knew were, were, were new to a friend of mine, and he put them in a non-transoceanic battery portable that required two when you force. And he did tell me that he noticed a difference in the radio's uh, ability to uh, pick up stations. So it, I know it does work. But also, if you have a, a battery portable that utilizes 1U4s or even, I guess, 1T4s or any of those other 1-volt uh, tubes that are needed to, to, to get a good, strong signal, you know, if, if you don't have good emissions on them, they may test as good, but if they're weak, um, you know, it'll still make the radio play, but you're not really optimizing the radio. So, anyway, and that's it. That's, that's, <laughs> it, was, it was a fail. But uh, it was kind of fun, nevertheless, and uh, I figured I'd just share the fail with you. I mean, uh, nothing, nothing in life is perfect. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, thank you very much for all the kind comments about my uh, car accident. It's been a month uh, since then, and I'm pretty much 100% now. So, uh, you know, thank, thank you again for all the kind words. And I'll see you down the road. Take care.